Good morning, I'm Helen Bennett and I've been asked by Farm and Connect to host a session on diversification. In my presentation to you this morning, uh, I'll talk through what diversification is and can mean to a business. Then I thought I'd share a little bit about my background and my diversification experiences to date. And finally, what elements we all should consider when diversifying. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in the ask a question section and I'm sure Rhiannon will ask them on your behalf at the end. The definition I found, um, which I think describes diversification well, is when a farming branches out from traditional farming by adding new money making activities, this can be in place or in addition to its traditional farming pursuits. Examples of farm diversification include holiday accommodation, farm shops, experience stays. These are increasing in demand. Examples of these include tasting and food pairing days, a weekend living off the land bear grill style, uh, four by four experience, or a day in the life of a farmer. People are becoming more and more disconnected in rural areas and how food is produced which is why these are increasing in demand. Also, um, bottled milk and egg vending machines are proving very popular at the moment. According to NFU Mutual 2020, more than a quarter of farmers in Wales are looking to diversify into other enterprises to support their farm businesses when the UK leaves Europe. 62% of farmers have already diversified their businesses with over 9 out of 10, which is like 94%, being financially successful. And uh, this is very high, actually. Um, <clears throat> my background is farming through and through. I was brought up on a hill farm in Sanvi Hangel, where we had beef and sheep. My mother and stepfather were always looking for opportunities to enhance the business. Experiences of diversification for me growing up, including going into laying hens in the 1970s, where we had 6,000 birds from day old chicks. Looking back, this was a lot then, and we supplied golden lay with eggs. We stopped rearing the day old chicks and then bought the hens as point of lay pullets, which then we ended up having an empty shed. We then saw an opportunity to set up a worm farm with manure and we produced and we complemented our fishing enterprise where we charged fishermen to come to our fishing pools and there we were rearing both um, rainbow trout and brown trout and then my mum also did bed and breakfast in the farmhouse and we rented two static caravans for holidays. Um, I went to Fleece Vassy Agricultural College and did a National Certificate in Agriculture with Home Economics. I also did a National Certificate in Dairying and did my share in Proficiency and followed that on later on with Farm Accounts. And I married 30 years ago and joined the farm and business at Upper Hall of Beef, Sheep and Dairy. I have three children, which took much of my time inside the business, and I just wanted to highlight that this is a important job, which women usually lead in the family. With my husband, Alan, we've grown the business and have diversified where we can. Here are some of the ways which we have diversified. We converted into organic in 1998 to add value to our milk. In 2000, we started growing organic vegetables and we were selling potatoes, carrots, beetroot, swede, parsnip, onions, and these were going to um, organic farm foods, the box fresh cream in Shrewsbury to local people, shops and farmers markets. After doing veg for 10 years, price reduced the change and we went to free range laying hens in 2007 with 16,000 birds. And by 2010, we had 64,000 birds. We have also maximized opportunities with renewables, installing solar panels, biomass boilers, and planting trees. 
We have also added value to our sheep flocks producing Sheen, Texel, Cheviots, and more recently Border Leicesters. We fancied a change back in 2012 and with my sister and brother-in-law we bought a grade two listed property by the coast to renovate and do as a holiday let and a chapel came for sale just behind so we bought this in 2018 and we are now currently renovating it. So now we move on to reasons for diversification. I think it's important to highlight that diversifying shouldn't be done to support a failing existing business. All enterprises and business should stand alone long term. The key reasons I think a business should look to diversify are if there is spare or underused resource, whether that could be time, skills, experiences, an area of the farm equipment, or it could be a combination of these. A classic diversion example that has been popular over the last 20 years or even more is providing on-farm holiday lets. The farmer in most cases, the wife, for spare time once the ch children have grown up, they have all of the appropriate skills to run a holiday let and um, they would be organised, can be do accounts and have people skills and there's a ban on the farm which is unsuitable for modern farming and would be more profitable if it's converted into holiday lets. Equally as important, there must be demands for holiday lets. In this example, with the ban being located in a rural area and or being located near attractions, may mean there is an opportunity and market research should be done to confirm this. Another question to ask yourself is, is your current business ready for diversification? There are five points I think are important when answering this question. There surely would be more as well, but I'll just do five. Um, is your business performing to the best of its ability or is there an improvement to be made? By this I mean, if you're not getting the most out of your current business, why are you looking to focus your efforts somewhere else? I'm looking at our business, um, how we can be more efficient and to do things better, have more structure and more organisation in the business that we already have at the moment. Another element to consider is resource. What resources do you have available to you in terms of time and equipment and facilities? Time is precious and limited. If you can get a machine to aid the business and save man hours, but it must be cost effective and give a return on your investment. I don't want to give too many examples, but I'd like to give this one. If you have to pay 10,000 on a piece of equipment that you think will save you time and work, sometimes spending that amount of money for some businesses, it can be a bitter pill to swallow. But if you're saving two hours at £9 per person, and that's £18 a day, got a return on you, <coughs> if, if, you're, if you're saving two hours at £9 per person, uh, that's £18 a day, and you do this for 365 days of the year, you've got a return on investment saving of less than 18 months. Likewise, if you have a business with quite a lot of staff, Micromanage, micromanaging is not a thing that you want to be doing. By this I mean <clears throat> you have got a protocol in place. Say for instance something goes wrong with your egg packer, you have a notice on your board which says number one try this, number two try something else and number three take note of the egg numbers, press the reset button and if that doesn't work any, only then that your staff call you to let you know that uh, they need help and guidance. The other thing uh, as well is your staff need to be trained and are they ready for your diversification project? It's very important to respect your time and if you are in charge of the business, the leader is the one that influences the business the most. Depending on how many people are involved in your business, the structure of your business is important 
and may need to adapt to your new diversification business needs. For example, when we established our egg enterprise, it was set up as a limited company. This changed the structure of our business, but it was necessary. When considering your business is ready for diversification, I really do think that whatever you go into, you really do need to keep up with modern technology. Your phone is one of the biggest, in my opinion. It can be used for mobile banking, taking photos, videos, to market your business, accessing a camera in the livestock sheds, or even on your doorstep for security to speak to delivery drivers when you aren't at home. We have an automatic mop and hoover, which I can activate through my phone as well. Other technology could include tractor, GPS, robotic machines, and grass plate meters. My final point is finance. If you're, if, is your business business ready and set up right with the accountant and have a good accountant that has other successful businesses in similar fields to what you want to go into? How to overcome barriers when developing your diversification idea. Um, firstly, I'd source out help when necessary. This may be because you haven't got the skills yourself or to meet legal requirements. Examples of this point may be applying or gaining planning permission, which is often one of the first barriers. And uh, generally we use architects and other estate, estate agents are there to help. And sometimes you don't need planning at all, depending on what diversification you're going to go into. And many farmers employ shearers and contractors as the capital cost of buying equipment is unjustifiable. Address the small issues before they become big issues. The last thing you need in a busy business is a headache. I find that. Be open-minded. Sometimes if you face a barrier, you may need to think outside the box. And, um, and uh, staying focused and open-minded will help you to do this. For example, uh, we wanted to five, um, a five-star rating with our holiday cottage. I really felt that that was the best way to go. We wanted to go five-star. So we put a dishwasher in, uh, on suites, washing machines, etc. But then our chosen ad advertiser came along and advised us that we should achieve a high four-star standard instead. So that customer satisfaction and therefore reviews would be high. So although the, we wanted to go premium, sometimes going more mainstream can mean more beneficial. This can be relevant for eggs, sheep and other products too. Also circumstances can change overnight. Be adaptable where possible to accommodate your customer needs as long as it fits with the aims and objectives of your business. You may need to offer a variety, for example, when we did the farm vegetables, we started just with carrots and white potatoes. Then somebody asked us for red potatoes. So we moved on to, then to red and white potatoes. And then it moved on again over the years to sweet, parsnip, beetroot and onions because it was what the majority of our customers required. And my final point is that all businesses have problems, which can be stressful. We all cope with stress in different ways and we have varying limits of amount of stress which we can take. It's important to recognize what causes you to be stressed, how much stress you can cope with and what helps you to de-stress. You must look after your health, and well-being, otherwise there will be no business. And finally, I wanted to talk about the elements which we should consider when looking to diversify. There are a, a very wide number of these, but uh, I'll just go over a few. Um, <clears throat> and they're all interlink into each other quite a bit as well. So we've talked about doing um, your market research. Is there a demand for the product or services you are looking to offer? You need to look at how strong the sector is that you're thinking about going into. 
If it doesn't have a strong demand or profit potential, that could be quite risky. Do whatever you can to protect the downside of your new business, even if this means hiring something in the beginning, for example, like machinery. Preserving your capital so you can have a cash buffer and try not to drain your bank balances just on one thing. Uh, second point is current resources available. We've touched on this already, but you need to assess what you have or what may help you in diversifying. Look at what skills or any staff have which can add to your diversification project. Play to your advantage. For example, when we looked into installing the biomass burners, we already had staff that could manage them. There may be underused resources. Many farms have underused buildings and farm resources. Farms that successfully diversify are often able to put their existing farm assets into use. Making a list of your existing farm underutilized resources is a useful first step in working out potential ideas. Have you got the time to spare? The first five years of any new venture is crucial, so ensuring you have the time will increase its success of its chances. Thirdly, you need to know how much it is going to cost to enter. Some have a high startup cost, others would have very low. You also need to consider your cash flow of your new project. This may be impacted by seasonality and must be looked at at cash flow forecasts. Um, like with us, we find that multiply, uh, multiple enterprises really benefit our cash flow and uh, they're fairly consistent, the egg, milk and renewable income is. But seasonal sheep, beef and holiday income, they're more, more, season more seasonable. And um, will the new project and the existing business be better off? We don't want the existing business to suffer. Sometimes both businesses can complement one another and just fit in. You also need to consider how the new project diversification is going to affect you and your family. Most farms diversify to keep the family going on the farm. So who is it for? Is it in the interest of you and the potential future generations? Make sure that whatever you, divide, whatever you diversify into, you are interested in, you are more likely to like it more and be more committed to the project and more successful as a result. For example, I like to do a project for 10 years and do it well, then move on to something new to keep my interests and challenge my, myself. In my life so far, after getting married, I seem to have spent 10 years bringing up children, 10 years doing vegetables, 10 years doing hens, and now I'm on to my 10 year project of holiday cottage on the chapel. <laughs> then I'd like to start winding down, enjoying the next 10 years with my grandchildren and horses. And finally, um, funding and support. It is always worth checking what funding is available perhaps grants through Welsh Government. Farm and Connect also have a range of services such as training courses, mentoring and advisory service. Tap into whatever you can. I'd just like to finish off with this quote from Lewis Carroll. In the end, we only get the chances we didn't take. This is very true and often the thought of actually carrying out this project is worse than it is actually doing it. If you are looking to diversify, then I hope that this has given you some pointers to think about. Rhiannon, I'll hand you back to see if there are any questions and thank you all for listening. Great, Jochen Varian, Helen. Thank you very much, Helen. Diolch yn trafod um, yr ysymau am arall gyfeirio beth i ystyried cyn dechrau project. Siwti paratoi eich busnes i arall gyfeirio a hefyd siwti delio gyda unrhyw problemau. Thank you, Helen, once again, very much for sharing the reasons for diversification, what to consider before going ahead, how to prepare your business to diversify, and then how to deal with any barriers um, or um, that can get in the way of your progress sometimes. Um, I, we've had a couple of questions here, 
Um, but I would ask people not to be uh, shy in coming forward and asking your questions. Just click the Q&A button on the screen and type your question in the box. Remember, the only silly question is the one that you didn't ask. And this is your chance to ask somebody who's had a lot of experience in, in this area. Peter Corden Swirlam Govin question I bore him up. Honey, a couple e Tabaho, a Kangor Gedahuin, Proviado Lian to the board true process or Ashkabia. A copy of Harini question top, you're in the dim wedding Govin. So we have got a couple of questions here. I'll start with Should a diversified business always be kept separate from the farming business? Um, not necessarily. Um, all our businesses interlink um, with our main DN Bennett and Son business. The dairy farm is all on that. Our clean sheep are all on that as well. But um, it's like I said in um, in um, my presentation. Now was um, we have ended up having to put the the hens separate. And of course, um, when we've done the holiday cottage, being as that was with my sister and brother-in-law, that is a separate enterprise as well. But they all seem to be able to be standing on their own feet at the moment, which is uh, what we're looking to do. Great, just following on from that quickly then, uh, what do you feel is the future of holiday lets in Wales? I think uh, that the future should be very bright for them because uh, I think a lot of people at the moment are afraid of um, flying and going to other countries just at the very present moment. And uh, families are going to be, for the time being, I think, trying to remain together. And uh, holiday lets seem a very, very good way to do that. Yeah, I'm following on quickly again from that. How can I get my tourism diversification back up and running quickly after restrictions are lifted? Um, well, I think you need to have a look at your holiday cottage now at the moment. They're cleaning regimes um, in place at the moment. They're asking us to um, uh, sort out our bedding, get a, an extra set of bedding and all that sort of uh, thing and uh, we just need to get on and do it all. Any painting, any cleaning that needs to be doing, it's a good time at the moment to refresh everything and, and look at your business as a whole. Yeah. Um, how do you conduct your market research? Have you done anything through social media? Um, I do a lot of market research through people, especially when we were looking at our holiday cottage. Uh, when we were, when the children were younger, they tended to want to go pony trekking. The boys always wanted to look for a gym, a swimming pool, things like that. Uh, we've put a games room in our holiday cottage. So it's just actually um, looking at, at what you need to do and um, and the area we looked at as well, and the type of holiday let that we did actually want. We all sort of wanted to go really for a stone cottage, and everybody has different views of um, what they feel that they want and need. And with the social media side, do you think that's a good place to start market research? I think with people, it's a very, very good place to start the market uh, research. The other thing is to go on the websites where other people are marketing their businesses as, as well, whether it be the dairy, uh, the sheep or, or cottages. Um, do you know of any grants that are available at this time, please? There aren't, um, there aren't many grants um, now at the moment available um, that I know of at the moment. No, it's, it's a difficult time, isn't it? Um, yeah. With um, people's businesses are structured quite differently, I should think. So it would it would depend a lot on that as well, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
good question here. It seems that there is a need for a lot of money to start any diversification and it's a huge investment. How would you recommend to start a project for a young person with restricted cash flow? Um, there are many ways to um, do um, a very cheap diversification, things like window no planning and something like that. Uh, an example would be, say you wanted to go into uh, sheepdog training and you do actually live on the farm and um, you've got the sheep, you've got the pens, you've got the hurdles that you can that you can um, run the sheep into and all you need to do then is to uh, purchase the dogs. So I think that would be an example of um, a very, of, you know, cheaper way of going into diversification and it's something where you wouldn't need planning as well. Also, um, you could go into contract farming or share farming with somebody else who might have the same idea, but it would be, have to be with somebody that you would trust that you could go, go into doing something like that too. Uh, but this question follows on from that then as well. When you start a project, do you go full throttle as it were, or is it okay to start small, i.e. a farmhouse kitchen or selling one butchered animal direct, etc.? cetera? Um, it's, it's okay to start small and uh, build your business up gradually until I would say after five years, it should have got to the peak of where you're wanting to be with it, so that you either move on with it or move on to your next project. Yeah, um, would you say that there are more, there is more need for high-end holiday let rather than a bunk barn type accommodation or does it depend on location? Um, there's high demand, I would say for both. That's that's a very easy question, really. Yeah, I would think it's it is for both. Do you have any experience of what what people tend to go in for? Do they tend to go more for the high end market in Wales? Yes, I would say that they do. They people these days expect more for their money. So if you can offer them more for their money and they're happy at the end of it, and that's the best way forward. Um, and what is your view on allowing dogs into holiday lets? Um, we don't allow dogs into our holiday lets at the moment, but um, we feel that we're getting enough, um, enough people in to our holiday let. We're renting it for, uh, well, we were fully booked all the way from March now until October. And uh, we didn't feel the need, but I have no problems at all. And I find it very beneficial for some, some farms to actually do this or to have a holiday let away where you can uh, have dogs. And some, some of the accommodation that you do um, do as a holiday let um, blends in very well and is very good for having pets and animals. I think location and um, possibly would depend, would be a big factor in that as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, and people love pets as well. And, you know, we all love pets. And uh, I think it is, um, it is becoming more and more popular though to bring, bring your pets with you, including horses as well. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Um, do you think there is room for everyone in the diversification market if there are so many farms looking to go into similar types of projects? I think uh, each project varies. If you were suggesting now similar types of projects, like you said, band conversions and the shepherd's huts, there's the wigwams, there's, there's all sorts of, um, of things that people can do. Um, and I think there is, is room for all of us in this. And I think people will want to come out to the country more after what's happened with the coronavirus too in the future just to, to get out and away from things. And just to have the new, new experience, like I was explaining before, the four by four experience, the wine tasting experiences, those sort of things. Yeah, definitely. Do you think there is a demand for wedding venues in the countryside? Yes, I think so. And um, 
outside is becoming more popular now as well with um, Mackies and that sort of thing joining onto beautiful buildings and we have a beautiful country in Wales and um, they are becoming more popular. Yeah, um, another one then on the sort of tourism side. If you were looking to carry out a holiday cottage development, how would you go about getting planning? Would you get a planning advisor or do you think you can do it yourself? No, I'd get a planning advisor. Yeah, we are currently renovating a, a chapel at the moment, which came up next door to our cottage. And um, we've uh, gone through planning advisor with that and uh, we try and go local as well. Yeah, and um, especially I assume, you, well, you said your holiday cottage was a listed building and yeah. that probably is. So you need a bit more um, expertise in that, that area then as well, because there's other considerations, but. Yeah, there is. And, and it was in a national Snowdonia National Park as well, okay. which took us a number of years to um, to get it going. But, um, uh, we were very happy with the result in the end, and it's just working with the people is the most important thing. Yeah. Um, we'll look at a different aspect of diversification now. How, how effective is the biomass business? Um, very effective for us it is because um, we um, heat our dairy and our house and uh, a, laun a laundry room we do so the heating is in the laundry room so it keeps our laundry um, aired for the holiday cottage as well and um, we have underfloor heating in the house and uh, we're very pleased with it and um, following on from that, is it still worth diversifying into renewables with um, now that the feed-in tariffs are ceasing? Yeah, there, there are no tariffs now at the moment, but uh, yeah, we are looking at the moment to, uh, it's one of the things that we're looking at the moment to do again, is to look into renew renewables because electric has gone up again with the farm. And uh, we still think that even though that there are no um, tariffs now, that it will help our business because we will be using the electric. And it's one of the things we're looking at at the moment. Okay. Um, with the vegetables, what was your process of finding the market and how did you approach shops to sell your produce? How do you go about forming contact, contracts? Well, at the time when we did the organic vegetables, um, they were all organic. So we sourced every possible organic um, producer and well, people selling uh, organic produce within about an hour of our, our farm. So the furthest away we were going to Ludlow and Lempster with organic farm foods. And we we're going to Box Fresh and Shrewsbury. Um, we're going to Llanidlois to their organic shop there, Ossestry with theirs, and Llanfallin as well also, also did one. And uh, farmers markets we did as well. So yeah. you, you do these things and you have trial and error and see how, how things happen. Yeah. And do you, do you need planning for a shepherd's hut? Going back to the tourism side now. <laughs> you need to ask your agent <laughs> they would tell you yeah so I don't know but the, the agent would uh, would tell you okay and do you use all media outlets for marketing which is the best for interaction and gaining custom we don't use an awful lot um, we use Facebook and those sort of things quite a bit. For especially on our sheep, we do. Yeah. That that's a big big one with the sheep, really. And it's free. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Yeah, and you you do act, access quite a number of people as well. You could access, you know, a few thousand people really on that. We find them. So with the social media it's just got that reach i suppose yeah. 
And I think your marketing uh, products as well, you have to believe in them. You have to believe that you have what, what, whoever's coming to purchase something off you, that you have the product that they are actually looking for. And I, I do that when I, I, did, I didn't sort of say on it, I do like my horses at the moment and I am planning on putting one actual, actually on a proper website at the moment. And um, I've taken pictures of her and um, I, I think that pictures tell a big story about a lot of what you're selling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, how supportive are banks of funding diversification projects? Um, I think they're not too bad, um, but it's much easier if you have assets to put against your loan. So that helps with a lot of people. Um, for somebody young setting up, it's very, very difficult. I remember when I was setting up my own business, um, when uh, I was younger, I found it very difficult. I was almost having to put the money there myself so that uh, I could actually have a business checkbook. And um, I was finding it quite difficult. And then uh, with setting up a new business like that, um, I was finding that you do have to like rent machinery or rent sheep or, or whatnot, isn't it, you know? Yeah. When, when I was at Penn Park at my farm years ago, I was finding it very difficult to have a bank loan, of which I did, did have a very small loan, but it wasn't enough when I was setting up. So when, when I was coming then to um, actually turn a ram to my sheep, I was breeding mules on speckle faces then, and I needed uh, a couple of blue faced Leicester tups. I ended up going to um, hire one tup for £150 because it was a tap that was worth four or five hundred that I wanted because I wanted a good one. And then I went back and um, hired another one for the other three weeks for another hundred and fifty pounds and those tops went back. And I think it's quite a good way to look at alternatives and see what you've got around you or if you have, a, have somebody who would borrow you a trailer or something like that just to set you up for the first 12 months. It, it would help your business if you can't get the capital. So then at least then your bank manager sees 12 months of accounts so that you can start, start then to um, show your bank manager that, um, you know, you are worthy of a loan. And where do banks stand on um, funding a diversification project based on an existing business? I find if, you're, if your existing business is doing very well, um, I don't find that we have a problem with loans and there's no cheaper time now being to loan than ever. I remember like when we were first married, we were paying 17% and it's now three or less. So it is a good time to borrow. Yeah. And um, I had the other day in the bank when it's showing the new interest rates have gone down again, you know, it's, your money isn't worth an awful lot in the bank, so it's better off, you know, if you can do something with it. Yeah, yeah. Now is a good time. Yes. Okay. A very good time. <laughs> <laughs> better than I had. <laughs> We've got a few more questions here. Um, we are setting up an alpaca farm and would like to be off grid. But we were advised we are dreaming as it is too expensive and not worth it. What is your opinion? What, what would she mean by off grid? I assume that they would generate their own energy, possibly. And we'll see. So, can you ask the question again, please? Oh, yeah, there we go. So, wind power and solar energy. So, off grid as in they will generate their own energy with wind power and solar energy, but we advise that it would be too expensive and not worth it. To, um, to actually run alpacas? To set up their alpaca farm. Um, I don't find too much of a problem with that because um, it's the shearing of the alpacas that you'd need, need your uh, energy for and electricity and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, I assume it's the initial investment in setting up the solar and the wind 
power as well, possibly that on on the farm. So that would be a huge setup cost. Okay. They're needing to to do all of that. Right. So it would it would be a, a big capital investment then. Yeah, I'm not quite um, not quite sure. Is that for the for the whole farm buying a new farm, having to set up all their all the electricity means and all that, and the alpacas as well, everything. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, of all the enterprises you have, which has been the most successful, and which have you enjoyed the most? <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> the the sheep have been very good. We've enjoyed very much, and um, the renewables have been an interesting. Because I at the beginning, uh, when I first got married, I wasn't mechanical minded and all that sort of thing, and uh, it does does give you a new interest. Yeah, and the hen, hens have been very good, but they're not as good now. No? Not as good as they were. Okay. Yeah. Um, planning is an issue with that now at the moment as well, which is quite difficult. Yeah. Do you find that different, that you'll have peaks and troughs for the different enterprises? Yes, definitely. Yeah. The milk as well goes up and down and... All that sort of thing. So you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah. And then when it does go down, you've seriously got to look at your business again and see where you can cut costs. There's sheep sales now as well. That's another thing. We don't know if we're going to get get to the sales or not. No, no, they might not be on. Yeah. With having all your businesses tied together, how do you deal with criticism or bad reviews? such as someone staying in a cottage and seeing a lame sheep or cow or cows escaping and disturbing their time in the cottage? Um, our cottage, we don't have any sheep or anything by it. It's in a village and it's uh, by the coast. And um, I would try not to have any lame sheep about if we can possibly help it. We all try that anyway. <laughs> but then humans become lame as well so <laughs> we all we all end up lame now and again <laughs> yeah yeah um, because... and i welcome some feedback yeah we like we like reviews and we like you know when people say they have problems or what have you with the cottage and everything we like to have all the feedback and like to put it right if we can yeah and as long as it's constructive and you can work with it and criticism ha has to be taken as part of yeah. the job you're dealing with the public. Yeah, we're quite happy to have um, criticism, really. It makes us work a bit harder. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of questions here on renewables. So someone keen on renewables, where is a good place to start with this? And what, what renewables would you advise? Do you have any solar power? Um, Chris Brooks is on the advisory from Kaisus and he's with Farm and Connect and uh, we used him and he's very good and that, that's on solar. Yeah he's, he's very good with energy um, and he's able to offer one of the one-to-one -one surgeries as well so if that's something anyone's interested in um, yeah. we can offer a surgery on your energy use and energy efficiency, but also renewables as well. So that's something Farming Connect can sort out. And we have one last question here. Um, would you recommend borrowing to set up a new project to keep everything separate or use existing finances and facilities? With our business, we use the existing finances and facilities that we have, we do. Yeah. You know, if, if, you'd, if you'd need to set up a business and you need to borrow like 3,000 to set up the new diversification out of our, our ordinary farm business, we'd use that money in the new diversification project. That money would have to be paid back and you'd have a good accountant that would help you do that and set it all up. 
Yeah. Yeah. Use use all you can. Use whatever you've got. Use what you can. Yeah, that's great. Um, those are all the questions we have here. And to make sure that we don't run into the time for the next webinar, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm afraid. Dochavari to Helen. Dochavari Paub. Amichtavanya Borema. Um, thank you very much, Helen, of course, and everybody for your contributions this morning. Yeah,